Well, today on Discover Energy Work, we have Catherine Uram. And Catherine Uram is a kind of surprise guest for me because I met Catherine in Thailand and she's a medical doctor. And then she told me she does energy work. And believe it or not, I don't know anything about what Catherine means by energy work. Is she using Spider-Man radiation on people? I doubt it. Okay, I'm being silly now. Catherine, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. I was really excited. I, I really love that medical doctors uh, use or believe in energy. I think, I think a lot of people do. Yes, Richard, thank you so much. I'm so glad we get to have this conversation. And um, yeah, I think energy healing is going to be increasingly more important in medicine and health um, now and going forward in the future. And that's why I think what you're doing is so important as well, spreading energy to people who may not have experienced it before. Yeah, you know, um, what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to share these stories. So um, a lot of people who've got into energy work, it's like it's the last thing they should lo logically do. They have everything safe and they have everything secure in a, in a very, uh, science, say, scientific system or they're an accountant or they're a nurse. And then suddenly what I call the, the gateway experience happens or something changes the way they see the world, which we call paradigm. So they have a paradigm shift. But I'm interested, um, are you, so you have people who kind of belong in, in one of two categories. Uh, I'm just going to make it general. There are people that when they were young, they were talking with the trees and they were just like little nymphs and pixies of nature. And they're just so connected. And then they have people like me who are, you might say, a bit more of a grunt. And, and then somebody bashes me on the head and wakes me up. Yeah, um, that's sort of who I consider I am. So uh, which which do you think you are? Are you more of a, I, I'm going to guess that you're a, a, a nature's nymph, but you know. <laughs> Thank you. That's so flattering. Um, that's a good question. Um, well, I did my first energy healing training when I was in my early 20s, like 23, 24. Um, Why? Why, Why would you do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, like every, our schooling doesn't go, yeah, guys, go and do energy work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. You know, I feel like I just had this inkling of curiosity. And mm -hmm. when I look back at that time, you know, I just graduated from college and it was before I went to medical school. And when I look back at that time, I wasn't consciously like, oh, yes, you know what I want to do is like, learn Reiki. I want to learn energy healing. Mm. I just like had this inkling of curiosity and then found myself in a training with this woman named Ann Mort in my hometown. And she taught me one on one Reiki and that, you know, started the whole the whole journey. Wow. So yeah. you just met with, with your um, degree. So you left university. Was that a medical degree? So I did uh, my undergraduate degree in biology, studying the immune system. Oh, and then I did, you know, then after that, um, I was learning Reiki. So I learned Reiki and, um, yeah, so I, I learned with this woman named Anne and, um, and, and it was incredible. She just taught me one-on-one um, -on -one and she attuned me to the Reiki energy. And so it was my first experience feeling this kind of universal love yeah, and um, yeah, tell us how I mean like you, you must have come out you've, you're a scientist and you've come out of a, your degree and then was it was that the moment that you said yes there is something here there really really is something here or or was it just a nice experience um that's interesting so I um actually came into science later in life. I was um, a, an arts person. I did theater, acting, and directing you know, my whole life, actually into the beginning of college. And it wasn't until um, the middle of college when I decided I wanted to be a physician because I wanted to help people. And I was in love with the world. And so I needed to learn science. So 
then I fell in love with science in terms of research and the beauty of the immune system. And actually, I'm so lucky that um, where I went to college, um, we didn't just learn biology via rote memorization. It was being involved with reading academic papers and being involved with research and just being involved with a living, breathing science. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it wasn't too much of a transition for me to, um, to learn Reiki, um, to be open to the energy um, consciously. I think right after I learned, um, you know, I was living in my hometown and um, I was experiencing these big waves of universal love and I didn't know what to do with them. I, you know, they would just come on randomly. I would be driving in my car down the highway and I would get this big sensation of love or I would can know you, can for you expre sure. explain to the because because I like to I mean this is very typical me yeah, yeah. so I, when when you said I get a sensation of love was it uh, a, a warm feeling around your heart or did you just feel like you loved everybody or or was there light or I, I'm I, I think yeah. some people won't know what you mean yes when you say so that. So I will tell you, so it was right after, so when I was first attuned to the Reiki energy, and I'll explain what, a, what attunement is. So attunement is when you have, um, you're connected to the energy um, of a certain healing system so that you can start practicing it. And so what that means, for example, like a system with Re like Reiki is that you are brought into the Reiki energy and you get this big sensation of this uh, of the Reiki energy so that you can start providing it for yourself and others. So soon after I got the attunement, I was driving down the highway and um, what I felt was my heart open. I felt this kind of light and pink loving rolling sensation. Um, and actually the, 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 um, the experience was preceded by a knowing that someone was thinking about me. So that was another aspect of this mm. experience that I was starting to perceive things I hadn't experienced before, like knowing of what other people were feeling or, or thinking. So the experience of that universal love energy was a rolling sensation an opening of the heart. And what I found was after when I experienced that, it kind of kept happening to me in waves and would start to take me by surprise. And um, I didn't know how to interpret it. So what I did was I moved down to the epicenter of healing in Sedona, Arizona to learn more about energy and train more and be with other people who were training. Oh, wow. So straight after, was that straight after the Reiki class? You just said, I got to, I got to understand this. So for yes. the medical school. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Tell us, well, where, where did you go? What did you do? I mean, you're like, you're in Sedona. It's a big wilderness. It's a, a desert, isn't it? Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, wow. Oh. So what happened? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's funny, it was a whole world open to me because I, I think one of the things that happened when I first learned energy, I was really young and it was just my eyes were open to this whole world of mm. healing and energy. And so it was so incredibly helpful to be mm. around other people that were learning. And there were so many um, exciting, um, there were just so many exciting things to learn. And what I felt was I went deeper into that station, sensation of universal love, of the heart opening, of that kind of rolling sensation. And when I was living there and practicing Reiki all the time, I started to feel this sense of natural joy. And mm. what I mean by that is just the happiness to be alive. And mm. I could just sit in my room and just be so happy to be alive. And I could go on a hike 
and just feel the nature. I could feel the beauty of nature. I could feel more communication with nature. Mm-hmm. I could go into a deep meditation. It was, and, and, and communicate. And, um, and it was, I had never had those sensations before. Wow. And so it was such a beautiful time of exploration. Yeah. And also, I guess externally, it was kind of manifested as, you know, I stopped like eating meat at the time and Mm. stopped drinking alcohol. And it wasn't because I tried to, or because I wanted to, it just was that my vibration of my being was raised Mm. and it just all fell to the wayside, you know, just fell off um, those kinds of habits. Wow. You're you're like in your early twenties. Is that right? Yes. And you're doing all that. You're not partying and like, that's that's so cool. It's uh, yeah. it's definitely fat. You you had to you knew your way, you know. Yeah, well, I, I think there was um, you y- you know, it wasn't entirely a straight path. That's for sure. <laughs> um, I was very intrigued at that time um, when I was living in Sedona. My world was opening. Actually, I still to this day will use a lot of the techniques that I learned then, um, for a while I was helped. Yeah. Who did you learn with? I mean, what, what, what did you learn? Um, well, I learned, I studied, um, at a place named at a place called peace place, um, with a woman named Laurel and her husband, Michael. And, um, they just taught me, you know, Reiki one through the Reiki master, and, um, and, and yeah, it, it was, it was different doing that shift in my twenties. That's for sure. It was a shift Amazing. from where I've been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so how long did you spend there? Um, I spent less than a year there, less than a year. Um, and, um, then I went to medical school and everything changed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Because you know, I remember <laughs> doing my, um, um, a clinical massage training, which is a kind of medical training. And it was like such a shock. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I'm from another world. Like I wasn't an alien, <laughs> then I became an alien. And now I'm with aliens. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, so, so tell us about how, how is it to be like this, this uh, daughter of nature and, you know, connected with energy and then going to medical school. <laughs> well, um, so, so that was a, an exciting time. So I, I was super wide open. Yeah. Right. I was super wide open and, um, and I walk into medical school and one of the first days we have our anatomy lab and in the anatomy lab, there's all the cadavers exactly. for the dissections that we're going to do for the year. And I walked in and I felt my energy field just go whoop. And uh, it was just closed and mm. it was as if I, you know, all, it was just too much stimulus, um, in there with the, um, cadavers, the, the formaldehyde, everything. Oh, the formaldehyde cadavers. Yeah. The people dissecting and, um, you know, I, I learned very quickly that medical school wasn't the place to keep learning energy healing um, and expanding consciousness. Mm. However, in retrospect, I know that I learned so much about energy healing and medical school and so much about consciousness. And that's in retrospect. Um, Yeah. And I think that that experience that I had with the shutting down of the field, I've heard of, of other energetically sensitive physicians having similar experiences. And I actually think that that's part of the training to kind of desensitize in that way so you can go through your job. Right, right. And so did you have any um, sort of energy, other energy experiences during the medical training? Yes, was... I did. Oh, okay. Ooh, I'm interested. <laughs> I'm intrigued. So. So, um, it, so it's a little difficult to learn energy healing in medical school because First of all, there's not a lot of time because there's so much to learn in medical exactly. school that yeah. it's hard to, to do that. But um, it's hard to I, go to the toilet, isn't it? I mean, it's it's such an incredible. I mean, that's the exaggeration, but it's such an incredible amount of knowledge 
um, in Germany they call the medical students the aliens because they're all white and it's the summer and they leave they leave their rooms and they're just white because they, they just spend their time studying inside that's all yes so, yes. Hmm. yes that's what happens um, yeah I, I would I would go study healing on um, my breaks from medical school and I uh, had really great experience on one of my breaks studying with a man named Martin Feist um, in San Diego and uh, was really it, like it fed my soul it fed my spirit. I, mm. I felt alive again and mm. um, and I felt you know it was in San Diego I felt um, the beauty of the ocean and the, the energy I was connected to the environment again and the, right. the healings were you know the healing was incredible I learned a lot more about the energy system um, with Martin Feist and also um, learned about my meditations deepened in there and also working with groups um, deepened in there, doing energy with groups. Um, okay. Did you feel was, like a secret agent in medical school that you, like if you told people what you felt, they would say you were crazy? Because I've heard that, like, like if you feel energy, don't tell anybody in medical school, you will get such a hard time. Yeah, especially from the teachers, or or was it? Yeah, um, you just express what you feel. Yeah. So, you know what I was saying about the the trainings. You know, that was very. It was beautiful when I would go to the trainings, but difficult when I would come back because, as you know, energy is a learning. Energy is a right brain activity. It's receptive. It's symbolic. And medical education is a left brain logical. Right. you know, um, activity. So it was difficult for me to always shift back when I would come back into medical school. And it was, mm. it, it was, it was a little violent for my system, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and to answer your question directly, you know, um, I didn't talk about my experiences, um, a lot in medical school with people. And, um, I, I, it's possible that I could have. I believe that medicine is opening up more to being able to talk about energy. I think that medical students coming in now are probably more open to these things as well. Um, but I felt that the inability to talk to anyone about it um, was uh, deleterious to me. Um, you know, I think that it's really important to have a teacher and a community when you're learning mm. energy, when you're expanding your consciousness, the teacher mm. can guide you mm. and help you understand what's going on with your process. And the community can help ground your energy. And I didn't have that. And I feel like it was um, a little, a little dangerous for me at points. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can imagine that as well, especially if you're, you know, you're coming in contact with a lot of uh, sickness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, if you're, um, yeah, I think we can say, uh, I'd be interested to hear what you say, but if you're uh, emotionally upset by, I say, an energy, then that's going to weaken your immune system. You're going to be much more susceptible to catching an illness in that case. I know that's, we'd say like in psychology, it's, it's just the emotion, but, but like if people perceive energy, then they go, yeah, it's actually before the uh, emotion, there's the energy, if you like. Yeah. Yes. Sure. It's. Um. I think that in my my experience of learning energy, my experience is slowing down and feeling the emotion and um, the sensations that go along with the energy. And um, in medical school, when you're learning and in training, you know, in, in in conventional allopathic medicine, a lot of times there isn't time to slow down. You're going so 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 fast. Yes. So, um, I think um, that would be an amazingly special training to have, to be able to go fast, to work at that speed and be able to have that energetic sensitivity. You know, I don't know if that's possible, but that, that would be an amazing training to have. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's, uh, I don't know if it's possible. I mean, we'll see in the future. Um, certainly, mm -hmm. um, there, there may be changes coming in the future, certainly with the current situation. So, yeah. um, so once you've finished, like medical school then you're uh what are you a resident or are you like a junior or i don't know <laughs> yes. it's, an, it's an i think it's an american system we have like junior doctor uh, but yes. you, i think you call it like a resident 
so then you you did your residency and was that again at the same time as like it just didn't get a look in because you're too busy well yeah residency was a whole other ball of wax you know i did my 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 residency in emergency medicine oh wow um, yeah and um you know because that's that's where conventional medicine really shines in my opinion it and does. also it does. yeah yeah emergencies and um, yeah, you, you can't, if somebody's lost a leg, you can't do Reiki on it. Yeah. You, you yeah. need to sew it back on, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same and dental medicine. A lot of dental medicine is like, you, you can forget you need somebody to, you know, pull a tooth or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I also in, in the United States, in, um, the emergency department is where a lot of underserved people go, people without insurance as well okay. so it's a chance to offer care to people who may not otherwise have okay access. i didn't know that yeah so that's another aspect of the emergency medicine in the united states um but um yeah so emergency medicine was very interesting i, I learned a lot and um in emergency medicine what i learned is that all of medicine is energy whether it is a you know hands-on healing um a conversation a hmm. uh, an herb, a supplement, a, p a pill, a procedure, mm. an intervention, everything mm. is energy. And so what, nice to hear. Yeah, everything. What really brought that to my attention is, you know, in the emergency department, I was working in Philadelphia and we had, um, you know, in the emergency department, you have a lot less staff at night, you're on minimal staff, but the department is still filled to the brim. You have people coming in all night long, all the beds are filled, there's people in the hallways, people having emergency, people coming in for other things, people needing a place to sleep. And you have to get everyone evaluated and treated um, and to the next place they're gonna go, whether it's to the ICU, whether it's home, and have the department cleared by 6 a.m. And in my experience, you know, having that, you know, that treatment of the entire department, clearing of the entire department, that's the epitome of energy medicine, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's a um, circulation, isn't it? Yes. Energy circulates. Yes, and you feel it and you get into that, you get into that rhythm when you're, mm. when you're working in, in the emergency department. Um, I also did a lot of ICU care in um, residency and the ICU was an incredible place to learn energy work as well um, for a few reasons. Um, one of them is that when there was downtime in the ICU, I could go do energy heal hands-on healing um, with some of the patients. Right. Um, and then also, you know, people in the ICU are critically ill. So they're in varying states of consciousness and they often, people often have these life-changing experiences. And you talk to someone that's been in the ICU, a lot of times they've had a life-changing experience there coming in the forms of dreams or visions. So there's mm. a lot of transformation occurring there. And, um, mm. you know, another aspect of the ICU that I learned a lot about energy is, um, you know, you have to do a lot of medical decision making with families there because people are critically ill and sometimes you've got to decide you know if you're going to prolong care withdraw care and yes. that's a family decision so um you know i there's one family that i was working with in particular the uh the patient was was very ill and um and was, was going to die and uh the family came together very beautifully they had a very strong matriarch of that family and they came together so beautifully in the decision to um, allow the patient to pass. And you could feel the ripple of healing go through the family. Mm -hmm. so that was so beautiful. Um, that was so be I still talk to the, the family there and, um, and that taught me a lot about healing mm -hmm. for sure. I, I can believe it. And, and I imagine, I imagine that unlike, I mean, uh, uh, the NDE, the near death experience mm -hmm. for many, many years wasn't recognized by Western medicine. Now it actually is, although we don't understand how it works. Psychiatrists do not think you're crazy if you have a, a out of body experience or a near death experience. They accept this is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at that time, I mean, you must have been in a place where you could reassure people and say, yes, that's totally natural instead of like, no, that's not possible. Or I don't know what's going on here. You know, something weird's happening. 
you know, did you did you have any uh, chances to reassure people? Uh, um, think? About uh, experiences they were having there. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, nice. I, I think um, one of the rewarding parts about um, working in the ICU back then is is being able to have um, profound connections with people. I think one of the things that happens um, when the situation is more intense, when people are critically ill, um, you know, if, the, if you can converse, you can have these opportunities to have profound connections and healing with mm. them. Yeah, I, I had, um, I have a story, I'll, I, maybe I'll tell it to you later about a distance healing that happened while somebody was in an ICU and they basically were going to die and then they pulled through. That's totally, oh, wow. and I was, I was in school, the, um, the teacher, Frau Dr. Biersch, um, she was the anesthetist and she was saying like, oh, there's this guy and he's come in and I'm like, it turns out this is a friend of a friend and blah, blah, blah. And I told the story to my teacher and as I said, I was carrying something and as I said, he was in an accident. Everything that I was holding fell on the ground. It was like, yeah, it's like a, a, a natural um, resonance. And then I said, and, and he's really sick now and it was like he, you know, baseball, he just knocked it, that energy that I passed him, he just knocked it out of the ballpark. Wow. And the guy just got better. And nobody could explain how he got better. It wasn't, the, you know, it was like they were just waiting for him to go. Um, and that was so amazing and, that, um, and so beautiful. And that was, again, it, you know, I knew what was going on. When I, when, I, when I dropped the plates that I was holding, I didn't, they didn't like crash on the floor, but I, I, I made a misstep and they just slipped and fell um and i knew oh we are lined up to to transfer something to this amazing teacher and he is going to do he's going to do something in a second and it's exactly what happened wow. and again that's why this and again it's another reason i i have the podcast so i can share my stories i guess and <laughs> and it's like Oh wow! I can tell people there there are these experiences, and you're not crazy when you have them. They're they're, they're just amazing. Yeah, that's so cool. Yes. Does that trigger another thought? I saw your eyes going. Oh wow! I did that trigger another memory of a story of yours, or or you? It, it was just exciting. It was just exciting to hear your story because I love getting to be able to see more how energy works. Mm. Do you, so now, now are you, a, uh, are you um, a GP or are you in private practice or? Yes, I'm in private practice. So um, I, after emergency medicine, I did um, my fellowship in integrative medicine, which is the combining of natural and conventional medicine. Okay. And I was. And was energy work part of integrative medicine? Yes. Yeah, we learned oh, really? about energy. In so our, you learned that in, in, in medical school, in like energy work in medical school in America. That's so cool. Yeah, in our fellowship program. Mm -hmm. Wow. I went so, to an amazing so program. So was that, would, would you, because would you, um, uh, I can't really imagine knowing the way that, you know, generally uh, the normal education system, they sort of give you a book and say, okay, we're going to be tested on this and here's a lecture. Do they actually, yeah, I don't know, take you out into the nature and say feel the energy of this space or uh, we're going to meditate and we're going to connect with things i mean how did how did um yes uh, we uh, had um so actually where i did my fellowship um, i did the fellowship here in arizona and i came here as a medical student actually and first before before the fellowship and um right. when i came as a medical student we had a whole energy healing extravaganza day where they brought in all different kinds of energy healers and the medical students could just go from station to station and try out all the different healings from all the different healers. Oh, wow. It was the coolest day. Yes. And, wow. and my heart was so elated at the time because I was in medical school and that happened and was like, you know, so shut down. So it was so exciting to have this day and be able to experience all these different kinds of energy because there's so many kinds of energy and just to be able to feel the different frequencies and different vibrations from the different practitioners. So that was really cool. And then when I was in my fellowship well, it's program. So open-minded. I mean, like yeah. uh, my, my father, a friend of my father's got healed of a totally um, 
incurable sickness at the time. She had uh, kidney cysts, so the, the kidneys were being eaten by the cysts. And she went to an energy healer, hands-on healing, two sessions. She went back to the doctor and said, your kidneys are completely recon reconstituted. At the time, we didn't know about uh, stem cells. We just wow. thought, yeah. And he said, this is not possible. And my father's reaction was, look, keep this a secret. Don't tell anyone. Everyone will think you're crazy or I'm crazy. Yeah. So in, and what a wonderful contrast you've got there of saying, no, 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 we got, we got them all out and we lined them all up and we went from station to station. I'm like, this is the best. That's yes. great. Yes. Yes. It was such a field day. It was such a field and day. Did you meet people which you said like, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to do a class with them or I'm going to refer to them or. Let's see. Yes, I did. I I did, uh, I did keep working with one of the women there for a while um, who, who did um, some interesting energy healing and she would have different language, healing languages come through her and heal, heal through these like vibrational languages. It was, it was very okay. neat. Yeah. So I, I worked with her for, for a little bit. Um, and um, when I was in my fellowship program, we learned about energy healing there. We did, we did, we did some experiential work with them ceremony and meditation and when we also learned about the evidence the scientific evidence for energy healing so we could you could be able to talk about it and if you were to use it in a standard medical setting how to how to how to use it um justifiably so again like uh, i feel like probably for a lot of people that when you're saying what evidence-based energy medicine are you are you kidding me yeah so yeah. um there is actually um there's been studies done haven't there can you can you tell us a little bit about that sure so being able to practice energy healing you know i'm in a part of my life where i am so excited about just practicing energy healing being able to work with people and and facilitate their healing i'm just so excited but part of my path has been how can i do this as a doctor you know mm. how how mm. can how can i do this and i think Part of what the evidence does for us is be able to walk us there until we're comfortable to be able to, to practice. So the evidence basically circles around the physiology of, of energy healing. So when you look at energy healing, um, you know, in its most basic form, what it does is it shifts the nervous system into a parasympathetic state, the relaxed state. Okay. And so what happens with that is that you know it takes you out of that fight or flight response into a relaxed state and then in that state your 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 nervous system controls the physiology of your body so your heart rate goes down your blood pressure goes down and then a lot of the chemical signaling in your body will change as well and you'll have some more mental clarity mm. so the evidence circles around that so when you think about right. what would happen when you're more relaxed it's like decreased anxiety decreased right. pain you know more yeah. of a sense of calm so the evidence circles around around that right right but mm -hmm. you must i mean probably you like me you must have had experiences which totally blow the um the framework out of the water oh have you? for sure in, in fact, in fact, Richard, working with you when I met you in Thailand was incredible because I, I love the work that you do. And um, when, so what I experienced in your energy work is I got to feel my spirit and, um, and experience that. And actually, when I was a teenager, when I was about 17 years old, I had an experience very similar oh, tell to us. that. Tell us. I yeah. want to hear it. That's great. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for the compliment. <laughs> I, I tend to sort of keep myself on the down low, but, but it's so nice, and I do love the yeah. work. The work you do is, is pristine. It, it's, it's pristine. And, um, and so when I was a teenager, you know, I, I think this is an interesting part about energy that you can have these awarenesses when you're not even looking for it. One of the things I'm learning is that everything is energy. Every experience you yeah. have, every interaction, yeah. every relationship, it's mm. all energy. So we're getting these energy healings our whole lives. And so when I was 17, I just had this experience when I wasn't looking for it that um, I just had experienced um, opening to this um, egoless space. 
where God. I felt it, it seemed to be a That's place. the divine, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I wasn't looking for it. It happened and I kind of just, you know, went about, went about my life. And actually for years, I've been integrating that experience into yes. my life. Yes. And um, one of the gifts of this um, more recent time is that I've been able to be more aware of what the significance of that experience is. And um, I've um, be able to talk about it, integrate it in more. And I've been really fortunate to be able to work with, you know, with you and other healers who've been able to, sh to, you get to experience those kinds of states, this, mm. the state of your spirit um, mm. just through, through energy. Mm. It's incredible. Uh, you see, I would say actually that that was your gateway experience. That was what yeah. opened you. That seven, yeah. it was seventeen. It may be something before, but definitely like like cognitively, like oh wow. And it's um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's sublime. You can't really. It's very. You can't really explain it to people. You can say it was kind of like egoless, but I mean, you can't. It's uh, it's very classically in the classical text. It's beyond words, isn't it? It was beyond words. And, and the best words I have to describe for it is um, it's e uh, egoless space. It seems like the place before you're born and after you die and the place that's running in the background of our reality at all times. So that's, that's uh, what my teacher would say. That is Tai Chi. Wow. Before the, wow. He would literally say it's before you're born and after you die. It's wow. that. That's the space. Um, or... Actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that, the way mm -hmm. he explained it, but that was very much him. But I, I can certainly, uh, he would say it was everything. It was the whole process and before you're born and after you die. So, um, so I suppose, um, you know, when I've been talking with people, it's, it's nice to hear your clinical experience where you said somebody has come in with a serious illness, yeah. you know, quite a few times and it's gone. Yeah. after you've worked with them and do you do you physically do you know put your you know put your hands on you know hold your hands to the screen this sort of thing or, <laughs> or you know do you physically touch people and trans transfer something how do you what's your modality these days or do you refer refer out so um so my practice of energy healing continues to change over time and of course, but yeah. i yeah. It's so, yeah, the more I learn, and actually, I, I would love to talk with you about some early experience, clinical experiences I've had and kind of what it looks mm. like now. Um, when, um, when I started, um, when I started my practice, I was still in the fellowship program, and I was so excited to get out there and, like, do healing and, and like, do medicine and, like, how I thought medicine should be done, and, like, I, I it's like I knew... I came from this world where, um, you know, in allopathic medicine, you just, there's diagnoses and there's treatments and that diagnoses are kind of hard and fast diagnoses. And I, I just knew that if you could look under the diagnosis and have help the patient look under the diagnosis and see the emotions underneath and the energy underneath and have awareness of that and connect with their own innate healing power of their spirit, that they could get better. And so I was so excited to do this. And, um, <laughs> and so I, and, and it's amazing looking back, I had great cases at the beginning that were perfect learning cases that so much like success occurred. And, um, I was very, very fortunate. Um, the first you sound so excited when you're talking <laughs> about it. I'm like, Oh, I'm so excited to hear it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's so exciting when it's so exciting. Um, when people get better and when, and when you it get is, to watch it work. It is. It's, I, our, it's, it's our biggest reward, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I, I love that. So I had, um, I want to tell you about my first three cases I had that Go for th it. three, three first notable cases. The first was, um, I got a call, um, from this, uh, young woman who was having seizures and back then, you know, I was making house calls and I, I went to her house and I talked with her and it turned out she was having pseudo seizures. They weren't like real Grandma. organic seizures. Yeah. Right. And we, we started talking and I, I worked with her and we elucidated that, you know, they were, had all these emotional and energetic underpinnings. And we started to elucidate that and bring more awareness to that. So that was, you know, one of the first patients I saw and it brought more awareness to her and there was some family dynamics going on as well. So it brought 
to light some of the family dynamics that were contributing. Right. Then the, the second case I wanted to tell you about, which was my, my first real Did she success. get over the seizures? That's what I want to know. She improved. She right. improved, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Like, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. And, and, and that was purely through discussion and awareness and helping her connect with herself. And, and a normal allopathic would have been, okay, um, I guess antipsychotics or something like that to, to help with the uh, seizures. Yes. Yeah. She would be on, she would be on some medications for it. Um, yes. The, the, the next patient from the early days of my practice that I want to tell you about was so, this is the one that just so excites me. So, um, so this woman calls me for a house call and she has chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and she can't leave her house because she's so debilitated from her ailments. And terrible, so, terrible sickness. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I go to her house and, um, and can, can I just interrupt because like, yeah. I, I want people to know, imagine every movement you make is painful. Every touch, every, every time you touch something, you feel pain. That is kind of the uh, fibromyalgia. And then chronic fatigue is that itself is so exhausting that you just, you're exhausted. So you almost, you haven't got energy to eat to get more energy. So you're just like, it's like, it's unbelievably bad. And, and a lot of people, they kill themselves when they get to yeah. these situations, the psychological uh, strain yeah. is incredible. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, it's sort of normally considered to be incurable, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that's part of, you know, what was exciting for me was to be able to have success. And I've seen a lot of chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia patients over the years, and I've had some nice success with them, which is very, very rewarding in light of that. But, but Tell me, you arrived at the house. Tell me, I'm, I, oh. I, so I didn't want to take away from the story. <laughs> yes. I just thought some people won't know what these terms mean. Thank you, thank you. And also, you know, as you were saying, people get very depressed with this. Yeah. So, um, so, um, so I go to the house and we, we start to talk. And one of the things that ha that happens is because there is no good allopathic cure or treatment mm. for mm. for this. Um, that's another thing that I want to talk to you about the concept of cure. Um, but because there is no, no, no good treatment, um, but people are still, still wind up on lots of medications, people well, with these can wind up going to a lot of different alternative medicine practitioners of all kinds seeking help. And so this woman had done that. And what occurred was she was on a ton of supplements, a ton of supplements. And one of the things you see in conventional medicine is what's called polypharmacy. People are on too many meds and it's it's uh, detrimental. One of the things you see in alternative medicine is people are on too many supplements and totally it's difficult. Agree. Yeah, totally yeah. agree. It's difficult for, for the liver. And in those early days, one of the things I found was that if you could take people off of their supplements, they would start feeling better a lot of yes. times just, yes. just yep. from all the stuff that their Agreed. liver is yes. processing. Yeah. And yeah. It's an irony, an irony, isn't it? Like people think supplements are going to make them better. And sometimes it, it's the supplements that are making them sick. Yes, um, yes. And we were talking just the other day uh, about uh, to um, Julie, and she does um, uh, Julie Bolduc in, in um, Waterloo uh, Kitchener in, in Canada, near, near Toronto. And she, she muscle tests or she does the energy tests for the supplement and the brand. So if you, vitamin C is like for one person, that brand's good. And for another person, that brand just don't, don't even go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you, and, and then she, she'll say, okay, and the best time of day for you personally to take this supplement is, and it's like, wow. it really, it really makes a big difference. But, but yeah, totally. Uh, people just overdo it for the supplements. Yeah, I can. And so Absolutely. this lady was taking a lot of supplements, I imagine, and that wouldn't have been helping with her, her energy levels. Huh? It, it, exactly. I mean, you look at her labs, her, her liver enzymes were up. And one of the other things that happens is meaning that her liver was, it was, was taxed too much from, from um, having to metabolize all this. And one of the other things that you see a lot um, with, um, you know, alternative medicine sometimes is that people get tested a lot for things. And so people wind up thinking that they are, are sick because they have these abnormal lab values um, when really a lot of times the labs aren't validated labs to begin with. So people are hanging their hats saying they're sick. This reason that I don't feel well um, mm. is attached to that. 
So it was a process of going through all of this with her and through conversation and bringing awareness and looking at the underpinnings of, um, you know, why she felt this way. And through conversation and through conversation, continually connecting her back to her core self, to her spirit, to her wellspring of healing in mm. herself. Mm. It was like all we did was clear the decks wow. through our conversation, just clear the deck mm. and then allow it, the healing, her own healing to come through mm. her. And um, so, and then I, before I left, I taught her um, about how to construct a ceremony and then um, to solidify what we had done together. And she did that. Well, the next appointment I saw her, you know, a week or two weeks later, she comes into my office, bright, glowing, mm. vibrant, mm. so happy. Almost, I think she was even wearing a shirt that said, I love life, something like this. Oh, wow. And it was glowing. It was so beautiful. And my jaw dropped, you know, and like, of course, like, it's not exactly you know, you know, it's not exactly cool to like, oh my God, that worked, you know, like, um, but yeah, it was, <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. It's when you've done the treatment you go, well, wow, it worked. <laughs> wow. Um, so that was so exciting. And, um, that was, that was such a miracle to see. And of course the next, you know, one of the next patients I see has the same thing, you know, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. I was, you know, I, 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 you know, I see a lot of people like this and, uh, p patients, often come in waves with similar problems. And, um, yes. and I was, I, got, I walked into that interaction, you know, with this, this new patient. I'm like, I got this. So, you know, I, I did so great with that last woman's chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia. I got this, you know, and of course, you know, I'm, of course this lady, you know, it's, it's not an, it's not an overnight healing. That's, you know, but what occurred was this woman did get better. This next woman did get better over the course of a year. And she had a waxing and waning course but it got better over the year. And right. one of the things that I learned was, and we did all kinds, we did you know, hands-on healing, all kinds of things. And one of the things that I learned um, in that is I learned two things from that experience. One is, you know, it really solidified for me that the healer isn't the one doing the healing. The energy does the healing. You right. know, you can't, like, you can't take credit if someone, if someone gets better, it's not you, it's the energy. Right. Right. Um, your and mic other, is catching. Your mic is catching and making a noise sometimes. So I just want to give you a heads up. Oh, thank you. How's that now? Is that better? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. We'll see. Okay. Um, but yeah, the energy does the healing. Yes, totally. And um, the other thing I learned is that you know I've never seen two chronic fatigue syndromes or two fibromyalgias that look alike. Everyone's are, is different. It's just a label for right. underlying energetics and emotions. Uh, you know what I I've had uh, I call it the power paradox that if you mm. get cocky uh, you're going to get in your own way. You're supposed to be egoless, and I think this is actually I would put it down to that core ex core uh, gateway experience you had. But mm. that's why you connect so well with energy, because you know in a way you know who you are. Yeah. You know on a very very deep level and so you're able to get out of the way yeah do you know what i mean and absolutely then, and i i've um i've had the experience of having one person first person i saw in the day it was like you know I, i'm using a uh, an american analogy of you know i knocked the ball out of the park <laughs> totally i was like wow and they went away like wow and the second yeah. person is the same and now by the third person, I'm starting to walk a little bit, you know, my chest is a little bit out, and, you know. <laughs> and, and the third person, they kind of like thought, well, he's a bit of an asshole, this guy, you know, I think, by the end of the treatment. And I needed it. I needed these experiences to go, listen, every single time is like your first time with mm -hmm. energy healing. Every single time. It's, you don't know anything. They, it is going to be an education every single person is an education for you and uh it's it's very humbling it's very very humbling that's so that's beautiful. really that's really beautiful what you're saying i love that thank you richard yeah every experience is an opportunity is is a learning experience i, I yeah. love that thank you I, and what i actually what i really liked from what you from your stories was like how wonderful that you can go and get your lab results to go ah okay 
I'm taking, I've got this intuition, but look, I've now I've got like uh, something very physical, which I can say, okay, yeah, let's try this. Let's, it's a bit like um, I was talking uh, to a Chinese doctor and I said, look, um, at Feng Shui, the way you're working with the energy of a house or a, a, a geographical location is acupuncture for the land. But it's the same as working with the, the flow of energy of the body. It's just everything's got a flow of energy. And if you can work on the, you know, if you look at um, a structure and you say, oh, that structure is having, a, having an energetic effect, I can feel it. Yeah. Don't you think that if you're energetically sensitive, you can look at some lab results and say, I feel energetically that these are significant. Yeah. Um, and then work with that. Yeah, like I need to pay attention to the liver results. And, and you obviously did that in that you, uh, you know, you, you went, oh, this person is taking way too many supplements. And by the way, if you saw what I see right now is like a, a big shelf full of supplements that I have. But what I do, I must say, just just to defend myself, is I, I, I hardly ever take them. But when I feel I need to, I muscle test what I need. And mm -hmm. I take exactly how many I need according to my own muscle test. And it's very much, um, I think um, for me, it's a lot of it's preventative. So it's yeah. just like, uh, I think my level of this is low or I had very fatty food for the last few days. I'm going to take some lycopene and, or something like that, you know? Um, wow. So, I mean, can people do a, how, I mean, say for example, you're, you're an energy healer some energy healers do remote sessions so like now we've locked down you're a real doctor but a real doctor yeah <laughs> like, like there are i guess there are fake doctors like there are unreal doctors yeah um and could somebody like say write to you and say oh i want uh, i want to uh, say on insurance in america i i guess i want insurance i want a, a distance treatment can is that possible do you do tra yes. distance treatments and can they yes. get it on insurance I, so I have my practice online and, um, that has been a great transformation. Of That's my brilliant. Yeah. That's yeah. brilliant. Okay. So you have your practice yeah. online really. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. so people, uh, you, you're having this kind of conversation with people all the time, I guess. Yes. I, um, I, I love, um, getting to do it online. It really opened up healing work for me in a very different way. And yeah, I want to tell you a little bit about this. So I, you know, I used to um, have an office and um, I had some very interesting um, kinds of energy work happening back then. Like one of the things I would do is I would do some hands-on healing with people and get people into that relaxed state with clarity where they're connecting with themselves. And I would ask them, where does your condition come from? And they right. could tell me. Right. And then, and then I would ask them what they need to do about it, what needs to occur to have it heal. And they could tell me, and that method worked brilliantly. That worked really well. And then I had another, um, you were talking about intuition. I went through kind of a, a wave when I was doing hands-on healing with people, um, that I could do the healing work with people, hands-on work and be able to, um, get intuitive guidance about what people needed to do um, for like um, supplements, herbs, mm. nutrition, which was beautiful to work with that intuition. And, and then it's always lovely to be able to pair that really clear intuition and that knowing with clinical knowledge. Right. Um, so now what, what's occurred with this online work is that um, it um, really opens up the people that you can work with. And I'm finding that you can connect with the energy and hold space for people and have connect with them in that energy. And then they can do that same thing. They can tell you where deeply their condition comes from mm. and what needs to occur. So I think it's amazingly powerful and in some ways, sorry. You sound like a medium. You sound like Dr. Medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're, you're, you're helping them connect to a place. That's what a medium does. The medium helps you connect to a place. It also reminds me, I must say, of um, 
the Phoenix-based, now he's no longer the Phoenix-based Milton Erickson, um, almost, this, this uh, asking somebody to tell, he would say to people like, tell me how you solve your problem in the future. And they would say, so he'd, he'd, he'd uh, do a time, time travel with them. So he'd go to a future self where they were healed um, and he was a psychiatrist, so Milton Erickson, and he's the father of conversational hypnosis. So they wouldn't be aware of all this whole thing. So he'd, he'd take them through, through time to when they were healed. Then he would say, what did I do that, that helped you? And he said, uh, they would say, oh, well, you told me to take this or you told me to do this. And then he would, he would bring them back and then he would just tell them what they told <laughs> him that he should tell them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, beautiful stories about Milton Erickson, uh, which I heard in, in uh, the frame of uh, NLP. But I mean, um, uh, yeah, amazing, amazing. And if you, you can even YouTube, YouTube in if you're interested. But, uh, and I feel hypnosis is a game. You know, this, this or this journey work is very energetic, very, very energetic. So that's beautiful. And, and uh, so I... I'm guessing uh, people can, there's a website people can connect with you at? Yes. Yeah, I have a website. It's um, dryuram.com. It's D-R-U-R-A-M.com. So, oh, it's so nice. You are am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you, you are am, like I am. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you are am. You are, you are the divine self. Oh, you didn't, is this a fake name or is it a real name? <laughs> it's definitely a real name. Okay. Sorry. Are you probably, people have said this to you before. I'm sure. Never. This is the first. I love it. Thank you. I think you just changed my life. Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like you are, um, every time people are reading your name, they're getting this, this, this message I am am ah, it's nice do you do you have like um, um, a like a final because uh, I'm imagine some spooky things have happened like have you have people talked in other languages like like languages that they don't know or you know like really weird things have there been like like physical manifestations of stuff or um, I mean, I'm thinking Yuri Geller kind of stuff, um, or was it more um, pedestrian? I'm I mean, pedestrian, like for us, it's like amazing stuff happening. But but like when something levitates and and moves and then you know goes down, you go, oh, that's not normal. Um, I don't think I've had any levitating patients. Um, the, the one, one, uh, cases coming to mind where, you know, I was working with a woman and, um, you know, there were different kind of spirits and entities coming into the room that, and we were both feeling all of them and calling them in. Um, and there was some ancestral healing that happened in there and it's really did you, nice. Did you see the spirits or you just sense them? Um, sense sense yeah. them a little bit of seeing but a little bit of but sensing and um i'm curious how did that feel because i mean i i've had my own personal thing and i can't i can't say how i see i cannot it's not seeing it's for, for sure it's not seeing but it's just i know that it's there and i can all, i can describe them but i cannot see them yeah yeah i in that circumstance i was uh you know it's uh the words that are coming to mind is that I was excited, but I, I don't think I must have had some more honor and respect at the time, but it was that I had, you know, I'd heard of these things occurring. I'd have people heard people tell me about experiences like this. So when it happened, I was excited and kind of got to um, feel a little bit in the layer of healing that we were in. And, um, that, that isn't that, that's so much in the, the level of spirit. I feel, sometimes feel people at energy work, uh, we sometimes have just psychic healers where they're just working with the mind, mind kind of energy. And then yeah. there's a whole level where 
some healers, they'll say, yeah, well, you just shift the level. It's like you finished on that level, but this is actually on a, on a spirit level or this is on a divine level and you just shift. Yeah. So it's just, just, uh, you know, when that happens, it's just, uh, just, it's because you're, you're able to shift levels and just say, Oh, okay. Change gears. Like, yes, we have stick shift, you know, yes. the, the, the Americans call it stick shift. We, we have gears. <laughs> we hardly ever have a, a, a automatic gearbox. So we're like, okay, change gears. Yeah. Someone's just yeah. walked in the one we know, that wants to talk to you. you yeah. Know, sort of thing. You know, I love how you're describing that because it's so funny because I, you know, I feel kind of most comfortable at the level where you work. That's, kind of where I feel comfortable as well. And it's nice to experience these different um, gears. And I think, it, you know, it's an inner, I mean, there's an interaction happening. I, I'm, I'm, I'm exploring this and I've never verbalized any of this, but there's an interaction happening between where I am, you know, where the person on the table is and what's happening in that time, yeah. you know, and, and in, in this particular healing that I'm referencing, you know, it definitely seemed to be ancestral and what the, the patient was bringing in you know, mm, and it was, mm. it was nice to connect to that. Yeah. Way. You kind of feel like that you feel like your patients are kind of teaching you as well as it's lovely. I mean, I, I, I feel so, I, I feel it's so lovely. I feel inspired by what you're doing and what you've created and, and, and how you're helping people. And I just feel, um, it, it gives me a vision as well for a future where with this really can be more accessible and not, it, it's always we we haven't proved consciousness but then again we haven't really proven matter either uh in all fairness if we're talking scientifically um nor do we know what time is yeah uh and so on so but um we we tend to sort of um how can i say sometimes tick, stick too much with evidence-based and then there's certain realms that we have access to which are incredibly healing and that, that I know, you know, people are, are going to be, be able to find a doctor like you is just really super for me. I love it. So thank you so much. You are a M. You are a M. You are a M. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Catherine. You're a M. You've been amazing. Thank you, Richard. This has been so amazing. Thank you.